So Christmas might have come a little bit earlier for me this year. I'm a bit lucky. And Santa went ahead and brought with him a Ubiquity Dream Machine Pro. Uh, so here in this video today, I'm going to tease you guys a little bit with the unboxing of this guy. We'll talk about some of its capabilities, what I plan to use it for, uh, and we'll even set this thing up. I will say uh, the initial setup using Bluetooth on your smartphone was super intuitive, super quick, and really cool to watch. So that's what we'll go ahead and get into here. So at this point, you're looking at this thing and you're wondering, right? What is this? Kind of looks like a switch, kind of looks like a router. Well, the answer is both, right? This is actually the dream machine. This is a device that is typically used in a smaller, medium-sized enterprise or, you know, at home uh, to provide some enterprise-level features and an, at an extremely good price. So before we load this thing up and get into the software, let's talk about physically what we got uh, in front of us here. So again, this is a router. So on the right side, that's where you're gonna find your routed ports. We've got two SFP plus ports on the right side. They're not both for WAN. One of them is gonna be uh, used for trunking down to another switch, or if you're just, on, if you don't have another switch, maybe you can trunk that to your NAS if you have a 10 gig uh, NIC in there. Um, but the top, the top 10 gig port is what we're looking at to uplink to our router. Uh, you can stick a GBIC in there. You can stick uh, an SFP in there, uh, or you can just use the standard one gig port. If you are in a service provider like me is only one gig anyway, and fiber won't do any good here. So moving on over to the left hand side here of the routing portion, you do have eight switch ports. Now these are non POE. Um, I do believe in the future they're going to be releasing an SE, a special edition model of the UDM Pro, which will have PoE ports. Um, so if you are in the market for that, maybe hang on a minute. You might uh, save yourself some money um, because then you won't have to buy another switch if you only need eight switch ports. Uh, but these are fully capable gig NIC ports with VLAN segmentation capabilities. Uh, moving further to the left, now you have... Uh, your NVR HDD slot. Very nice, very well built. This thing pops out. And you've got your tray right here. You can fit a 2.5 uh, inch SSD or a standard uh, 3.5 inch hard drive. Now, one issue with this for me, I will probably not even be using this because uh, I am a network engineer myself, right? So I like to practice, I, I, I like to do the best practices at home here. What's the problem with one hard drive for your NVR? No redundancy, right? So um, very cool feature. Maybe I can use it for something else. I do have some, obviously some extra uh, hard drives laying around. Maybe I can do something with this. We'll see. We'll experiment with that in future videos. Uh, but for right now, I will say, I wish they found a way to make two happen. Otherwise this is kind of pointless for me. Uh, but moving on over to the left here, we do have an intuitive touch uh, screen display. It does look very cool when you boot it up. We'll see what it can do later on. On the back, I thought this to be very helpful as well. We do have dual power supplies. We've got a standard, oops, sorry. We got a standard power supply connector here like you're used to. And then on the right side, left side, depending on how you're looking at it, um, you do have a proprietary failover mechanism connector right there <laughs> so that cable you do have to purchase separately i think it's like 30 bucks uh, maybe i'm wrong but anyway it would be worth it if you are um, interested in having power redundancy maybe you have a ups or um, a generator or something you can hook this up to in the event that um, you know your house power goes down um, so if you're interested in that check that out so next out of the box also came a few of the tools to mount the unit in a standard uh, 19 inch setup and right here i love this very very quality hardware you're getting here um i thought it was funny because uh, like i said I, I am a network engineer so i work with cisco switches a lot i have so many of these hang on <laughs> i love these little feet right I, I was doing hardware life cycles and i just decided to collect them because obviously we're not using them in the enterprise because we rack all these switches um but i i kept these because they're handy to have around and i thought it was funny that they sent me more so <laughs> Thanks for that. But anyway, in addition to that, they obviously have your mounting brackets as well. This thing will go, like I said, in um, standard 19 inch rack and I plan to get a rack as well. Uh, one of the things I thought that was really neat that they sent with was these Unify Protect stickers, right? This is kind of like, you know, you see it at somebody's house or on the, on the business just to say, hey, uh, we do have security cameras here. Uh, go ahead and check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Um, but I am not sure I'm going to be using these for that purpose. 
Um, I do think they're very cool and I love them, but what is a hacker's first step if they're planning on breaking and entering or uh, any otherwise generally hacking you, right? They need to footprint your network. They need to figure out what's out there. What can I hack, right? What can I touch? And I mean, displaying this on your window, although I do to a degree trust Ubiquity, uh, their, their products, um, no product line is impenetrable, right? So maybe a vulnerability comes out in Unify Protect and it's easily exploitable. I haven't patched my system yet. Somebody sees this and they say, hey, we're in there, buddy. I would probably go with something more generic rather than sticking this up, but I do love them. They are cool. Maybe I'll put it on the switch itself or something. I don't know. All right. So at this point, I bet you're wondering how easy is this thing to get up and running? And I got to tell you, it was very easy. Go ahead to the app store on your phone, download the Ubiquity network app, load it up, log in with your account, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, once you power this thing on, it's going to start broadcasting Bluetooth nearby. And once you do that, you can scan for the device on your phone. After a couple of seconds, the device is going to come on up and get discovered. You can log into it and claim it as your own. So go ahead and click the setup button. And at that point, you will be prompted for your uh, router's name. I'm going to go ahead and put my own network schema in there. So TG RTR 01. Um, and after that, it will ask you if it's home or business. I'm not exactly sure of the purpose of this. I actually went ahead and chose business just to see what happens. Sorry, Ubiquity, if that messes with your analytics, but I want the business features, right? So, so right after that, the fun part begins because instantly it starts to run a network speed test, which you can clearly see, you know, I've got my gig connection here holding up pretty well, even in my little daisy chain setup. Uh, so that was really fun to see. After the test goes through, it'll show you some metrics kind of about your speeds, how everything went, and it will ask you for uh, to input what your network uh, plan is. At this point, you can pretty much go ahead and skip through to the next part because it's going to ask you if you'd like to enroll in the analytics program, well, you'll go ahead and send them information from your device. Um, I chose not to do that this time, but if you'd like to do that, go ahead and select yes. Um, then the network will begin setting up. This will take probably a couple of minutes, so just stand by. Um, they do play a pretty cool video, which might teach you a few things about the device. We won't talk about that here, um, but check it out obviously while you're waiting. So a couple of minutes go by and bing, bang, boom. It's going to ask you if you want to accept push notifications. I said, yes, I will be using uh, some of those features here. So I do want to get those notifications. Um, and there we go. It spits you out right into a dashboard. And I remember sitting here looking at this like, okay. Just like that, I'm up and running, like that's wild, right? I mean, it was very intuitive. It's showing you live network traffic stats about what's going on. Obviously, uh, this device didn't have anything connected to it at that moment, right? So there's only kilobits of traffic happening right now. Most likely some ARP and or other multicast traffic, maybe some talking back to the cloud where we registered the device. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was pretty much that, right? So uh, I took some time to flip through some of the settings. Uh, obviously, I don't have any clients connected, so uh, there isn't anything popular in that field. But other than that, this was a random Thursday night after work. I was super excited to get this Dream Machine Pro. So that is about all I did. I just wanted to see how intuitive and easy it was going to be to set up. Uh, create this little video for you guys. A little bit of a teaser about what we're going to be getting into here in the next few videos. Uh, because like I said, if you guys plan to subscribe, we are going to be doing uh, not necessarily a series, but... Uh, like I said, I want to take a deep dive into a bunch of these features, and that's why I didn't install the router completely uh, in this video. Because like I said, this was a random Thursday night as I was doing this. I did not feel like tearing down my whole network, right? Tearing down my whole wireless network, getting all the IP addressing set up. I just, you know, there was no way. This is definitely going to be a weekend job here for me. But uh, that video will be particularly interesting as well, because if you're planning on implementing this at home, obviously you have a router and a probably an all-in-one router like I do, right? I have one of these Asus uh, RT-AX 3000s, uh, real gamer router, right? Uh, so I'll be replacing this router access point combo with this router switch combo, firewall, blah, 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 and uh, turning my current AX 3000 into a Wi-Fi access point only. So uh, this will be more of a conversion video coming up next, uh, but it definitely will be interesting to watch. So uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you guys for hanging out here with this video. I um, hope you liked the little unboxing, um, initial setup, kind of tease, uh, and talking about this UDM Pro. I know I'm super hyped to have it. So that will be it until next time, where we fully install this guy on my network. Maybe one of these days I will get a rack instead of 
mounting this guy on my kitty cats food bins. You can see they were super happy about that. But I will see you guys next time. Thank you.